blown off, but uh, no major damage to the AAA, the home of the Miami Heat. Janine, you travel this road all the time. Mm -hmm. It is empty, absolutely empty. And it, that is debris on the road there. It's it, still blocked. It is empty, and it looks like um, probably some, some of the water and some of the sand sort of came up on the road right there. It, it does not look uh, as bad as it really hmm could have been. Yeah. And I think the real test now is going to be looking at images from the middle and the lower keys and to see how those folks fared there. Is that the overseas highway or is that? Uh, or or is, is that, that Card Sound? Yeah, Card Sound. That is yeah. the 18-mile stretch right the there. So stretch. that's that's sort of the, the link between US-1 in Miami-Dade County um, you know, to US-1 in the Keys. It's, that's that stretch right there. You know, I uh, think it's really interesting too, uh, uh, Janine, that a lot of people have this enchantment with, uh, you know, the tropical islands, uh, the Keys. Just just talk to us about your love affair with, being, with going there and being there. Oh, I think m most of South Florida has a love affair. I mean, the Keys are South Florida, and, yeah. and there's, there's something uh, about the Keys, and I think if you choose to live in the Keys year-round, or if that's maybe where you grew up, um, it's it's a place where you where you go to sort of escape from the world a little bit. You make you create your own reality. You yeah. work hard. Um, you know maybe you uh, live in a small house or a mobile home, but but you live as I said before, you live like a millionaire because you watch the sunset or you watch the sunrise or you see the palm trees blowing in the wind. And there's just something about that that can't be replicated anywhere else. That's Gilbert's, uh, which is a very popular place. In fact, a lot of Miami folks like to go to mm. Gilbert's because it's really one of the first places that you see as you enter the Keys. And Lori, you were mentioning this earlier. It looks like the water's just about halfway up the tire, so it I looks understand. bad, uh, but it doesn't look devastating. Yeah. No, and yeah. those boats are still upright. Their roof is intact, so this they can work with. This is not, but there you see, you know, you're going to find some sails in shreds right now, people who couldn't tend to their boats, but in general, not a lot of destruction there. And I think Monroe County, uh, the, the county leaders there were fairly happy with the evacuation orders and how people really took it seriously. I think there is that, uh, you know, that sort of relaxed feeling, not only coupled with the fact that you're in the Keys, but also with the fact that there hasn't really been a major storm there in 12 years. Right, and I think too that a lot of people in the Keys uh, know how to fix up their homes and they know how to do things, and so they think, okay, well, I'm gonna stay here. Uh, if there's a little damage, I can fix it and it's not a big deal. This was the first time since I've been here in South Florida, since I've been covering hurricanes for more than a decade, that I heard my friends who live in the Keys full-time say, we are getting out of here. Wow. They took it seriously. Yeah. They looked yeah. at the forecast track, they were watching Local 10, they knew. They knew that, that there was the potential uh, for real danger. And um, thankfully, it looks like in the upper keys, there wasn't devastation. But again, we've got we've to wait until we see more of those images from the, from the lower keys. Yeah. Live Sky 10 over MIA. The latest from there, MIA is still closed, according to um, Mayor Jimenez. MIA is closed, but they are really trying to get flights going again for you. Both MIA and FLL are trying to get flights going by early Tuesday morning. So the latest we get out of there, we will certainly share it with you. A lot of people wondering, when can we fly back? When can we come in and check on things? I would think Wednesday. I was kind of telling some friends, what about you, Calvin? Kind of Wednesday or later, yeah. but especially you want to avoid the crowds. You don't want to be flying tomorrow unless you have to. So hopefully give it to at least Wednesday or Thursday if you can to get well, on back. We, we heard from American Airlines yesterday, by the way, these are live pictures from Florida City. Um, but we heard yesterday that American Airlines was trying to get their, per, their own personnel in, flying them in today, and they would have scaled back services starting at about 5 o'clock. But the airport does remain open, um, and I believe uh, Mayor Barbara Sharif just said that uh, the airport resumed operations at 4 a.m., but whether or not the flights will begin, that'll tomorrow. start sometime tomorrow. Right. She right. said the airport workers are there. They were there at yes. 7 this morning. Yeah. They are diehards. They were there to get things going. And they are hoping to open FLL by tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Yeah. And so we'll have to hear then from the airlines, of course, about what kind of flights and flight schedule they will have. Most likely not a full flight schedule, but yeah. we can only hope. And she said pretty much the same for the port, that the workers are there already. Yeah. They are trying to get things going. So we'll have a few more details soon. But um, an MIA never officially shut down, but the flights yeah. were stopped. So yeah. technically, MIA is open. And look at that traffic in Florida City. It looks like they are turning people away. They're pretty much blocking the road. If you look at the top of your screen, they do not want people going south. And I think they're obviously they are trying to assess the damage and they are really limiting traffic. Yeah, Monroe County uh, has put up that uh, not only a dusk to dawn curfew, but also, uh, they have asked people who were evacuated not to come back until they're able to remove debris from the roadways, which is the case in Broward County, 
as well as in Miami-Dade County. People just need to try to stay off the road so that they can get out there and remove lots of uh, trees that have fallen onto the roads. I can, I can tell you firsthand in my neighborhood and all around the city of Miramar, there is so much debris on the roads. You really don't want to try to go out there. It's almost like being in a video game and trying to navigate your way down the street. There's so much debris on the road, so don't, don't get out there if you don't have to. You need all attention on the road if you have to drive, and you just have to remember. I mean, all of a sudden, you can be on 595, let's say, or I-95, and there's no debris, everything's great, and then all of a sudden, you're in a neighborhood, and you, you or out of nowhere, there's suddenly something in the street, or you're suddenly at a four-way stop that you drive through a million times, you forget that you've got to stop, and it really, we have to treat every intersection as a four-way stop. Most of the traffic lights are out in Plantation, where I am. I mean, most of Plantation has no power, but I did start... I saw one little subway already getting going over there at University and Peters, if you're starving in Plantation. And it looked to me like the little McDonald's was starting to open there. The big one, the big main one there, right at 595 and University. So if please, if people have generators, they can get back going pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah, and we, we're getting a report now from the AP that uh, Irma has knocked out power to more than 5.5 million homes, businesses, and in multiple states. The majority of the outages, though, are here in the Sunshine State. So. I think coupled with the fact that it's pretty hot out there and a lot of folks are outside trying to remove debris, but if you are inside and you don't have a generator and you're, if you're in your home and those shutters are still up and you're trying to remove that, boy, you are sweating it out today. And I think a lot of folks are just waiting and hoping that the FPNL crews can get out there to their neighborhood really fast so they can turn the power back on so they can turn the AC back on. And yet you forget, you just expect power should be able to get right back on, but they've got so much to handle. And so, you know, we have this unprecedented 19,000 workers that are pre-positioned here. This is the record-breaking number. Yeah, and it's the first time in U.S. history to have yeah. this big of a preparation and this big of an effort. But And they're lucky. They said very few poles are down, so they don't have to spend time on infrastructure. But first and foremost, they have to check their substations, and they've got to clear the roads so they can get out there. They do start to do the hospital and school grids first, and then Finally, they'll get all of us back in power. Yeah, I, I think the great thing about what FPNL said too is that, uh, and, and also we're still looking at Florida City and some of the damage in Florida City as well. But um, I think the one great thing that they talked about too is that not a lot of power poles are down. It's more trees that are down, not a lot of power poles are down. So that will allow them to get power restored very quickly. And Janine is joining us once again. Janine, uh, your, your thoughts about seeing this in Florida City? It looks like they kind of took pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, some some heavy wind damage here, as you can crops. probably say for most of us. Sure. Well, this is right. You said it, Lori. This is sort of agricultural area. And, um, you know, this is obviously big business for South Florida. And so I think hopefully they're doing kind of everything they can to uh, make sure that they protect their crops and protect their businesses. Oh, right wow. now we're, we're looking back at Key Largo. We're looking at Gilbert's again, which is, uh, as you can see, it's it's covered in water, but but probably just a few inches. We're, we're hoping that I think it looks a little worse than it is. And that's where everyone goes. They get their jet ski. They go down for the Tiki Hut. And it's the first place you can really feel like you're in the Keys. It is. That's Gilbert's Resort. And in fact, they just redid the uh, the, the rooms. Um, pretty nice rooms, little single rooms that you can stay in. And of course, that's where a lot of local bands play. And um, it's a very popular spot for motorcyclists as well. Fundraisers are held there. Lots of activity over there. Um, and so hopefully they'll be able to... Uh, the water will recede and they'll be able to continue with business pretty soon. Yeah, and, and we talked earlier this week, Janine, and, and I think you were really holding your breath along with, you know, the many thousands of others who love to go to the Keys and uh, love to spend time in the Keys. And as you see these pictures in real time, um, I guess your, your heart, you know, sort of feels a little better, I'm sure, huh? A, a little bit better yeah. for, um, for at least for this, this part of Key Largo, for sure. Um, we have friends who live full time, mar mile marker 106, and they packed up their travel trailer and their pets, and yeah. they are currently in North Carolina because uh, they weren't sure where to go, and they just decided just to get it out of here. And because they live in a mobile home, which, as we know, is extremely vulnerable mm. in, um, in hurricanes, um, they decided just to get out of there, and, um, and they were crossing their fingers. They weren't sure what they were going to come back to, but from what it looks like in the pictures that we are seeing, you know, US-1, of course, is the high point, but it looks like from what we're seeing, at least some of these neighborhoods that are, and that's Coral Shores High School. No, that's not. That is, uh, that is the Key Largo School. 
um, the left which is there. an elementary school, which is to the left, and then to the right, um, those are some other, um, I, I believe those are um, some other apartments as well. And then last night, though, the mayor of Isla Morada was telling us by phone that, I mean, just south of where you're looking here in Key Largo, that he expected and was informed of major damage. Major damage. That's what, what the mayor of Isla Morada said. That he, he said that he thought that uh, maybe tourists would recognize it. Yeah. Um, but and we're just passing right now. This is um, Jimmy Johnson actually has a place called yeah, uh, the Big yeah, Chill. Yeah. We're just <laughs> passing Adam's Cut. That's the cut that gets you from the Bayside to the Ocean Side. Um, hopefully the Big Chill fared pretty well. Will Manso did a, a story with Jimmy Johnson on that. Um, but, um, you know, again, in all of these neighborhoods um, to the right, these are the Bayside neighborhoods, Cross Keys Waterways. Um, still right point. A lot of neighborhoods in the Key Largo area, people are sort of waiting to see what, what their neighborhoods look like. And so far, it looks like their neighborhoods are okay. I, I, I saw some images on Twitter of a neighborhood, I believe Bayside, that yesterday there was that phenomenon where the water just gets sucked out. And today yeah. the water is starting yeah. to come back. Yeah. And at least it's coming back right now, uh, looking very flooded. Um, but we have some store openings in Broward. I know people want to know. Calvin, can you read this email? It came in kind of sideways. Can you read from my computer? This is in Broward County from Cheyenne Malone. She's telling us the mayor is announcing these stores are open. Are the current CVS stores that are opening are in 3090 West Oakland Park Boulevard, Oakland Park, now open, and uh, 5501 West Oakland Park Boulevard, Lauder Hill, open until 2 p.m. People need their medications, so this is very important. 2801 East Oakland Park Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale open until noon, so they are closed currently. Walgreens is sending their list of all of their current stores open, and they anticipate having all stores open by 5 p.m. this afternoon. Great news. Walmart opening at 1 o'clock, 7900 West of McNabb Road, North Lauderdale, and Walmart currently open on uh, 1199 Federal Highway. That's in Pompano Beach. Isn't that great? That makes peace. That's a little slice of normalcy for people to know they can get their medications, get some, maybe even get a little water, get some toiletries they need. It is yeah. great to hear. Well, I, I do want to make, uh, well, this is sort of an update from the Associated Press that now Irma has knocked out power to more than 7 million homes, businesses, and in several states. The majority of the outages are in Florida. So I think one of the problematic moments for people is when your neighbor gets power and you don't. Right. Um, <laughs> I can make for a tough day for you, you know, so uh, some are on the power grid and some are not a part of a power grid. So that's always tough after a storm is when your neighbor gets it and you don't. So be patient. Uh, FNL is saying that their crews are out there working as fast as they can. So those were some store openings, mostly uh, Walgreens and uh, CVS stores in Broward and just know in Miami-Dade, 12 Sedanos markets are open today or opening soon. The Walmart at Flagler and 89th is open, and 31 Publix are trying to get up and going today. Right now, we continue to look at this uh, chopper tour. This is downtown Key Largo. Of course, if you live in Miami-Dade County, this looks a little different than your downtown. <laughs> this is uh, mile marker 99. If you're familiar with it, it's where there are a lot of uh, Key Largo Fisheries is there, uh, a lot of marinas there as well. Uh, and it looks like all of these places at least from this vantage point, are faring pretty well. Looks like there's a new development on the right. That's actually a new uh, development that's going in with a lot of little single bungalows. So hopefully the developer will be uh, pleased to see that it, it looks like it's fared pretty well as, uh, as well. And uh, I believe this is this is the ocean side, right? This is the yeah. ocean side. These are some houses on the ocean side. These are older, more established houses. You can see most of them are concrete blocks, so they, of course, look like they have fared pretty well. You might see some trees down and some palm yeah. fronds down, but these ocean side houses uh, appear to be okay. These are all houses that are on canals. You can see folks uh, have their, their boats out. They probably tied them pretty tightly with extra line. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, these are the houses that are um, that are, are out on points. And um, these houses, I think, were particularly vulnerable to storm surge, um, which we did see a little bit of in the Keys. And there, right there, you can see a little bit so, of boat damage. So we, we are seeing in real time the, um, time the Coconut Grove uh, Marina there. You just saw one boat that was uh, tilted to its side. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, Coconut Grove, I think, uh, I think Mayor Tomas Regalado told us yesterday that uh, a pier in Dinner Key. You were there uh, at the Dinner Key Marina, yeah. Janine. I was. Dinner Key, there was some destruction to some boats at Dinner Key. Yeah. Uh, we saw a couple of boats that came off there 
uh, their lines. Uh, they got washed up. And um, so, yeah, there was there was a little bit of a mess in Dinner Key. And just like the Keys and so many other boating communities in South Florida, these that's, are boats where people live. I think that's the field at Ransom. That is. Oh, my gosh. That's a boat all the oh, way wow. up on the other side of Ransom Soccer Field. And oh, mm. my goodness, that's their brand new gorgeous pool oh, and their that. pool center. Yikes. That is Ransom Everglades High School. Yeah, one of the best private schools in South Florida. Um, and wow. That boat was wow. lifted up, yep. carried all the way up. And look at the other boat in the top left of your screen. That is not supposed to be there. And uh, it, that is the, the waterway there right by, right behind Ransom Everglades. And I mean, a lot of destruction of their field there yeah. and, and their stands. I mean, that can be repaired. Looks but like damage to the, is, are, are those just pumps in a swimming pool there or? I don't know um, what that yeah. is. Yeah. But you're right, it looks like it's not any structural damage, just sort of damage to the grounds. Yeah. It just shows you the power of Mother Nature, yeah. of wind and, and a little storm surge, and that's all it takes. Some workers there already from the school, everyone assessing the damage today, and hopefully they don't have their power lines down. They do have a lot of lights for that field. Oh, well, and, and, and if you look at the bottom right of your screen, 78 degrees. Yeah. 78 yeah. degrees. That is not bad. That is, that well, is, uh, yeah. the, that is, if that is the. you don't have AC, uh, 78 it, well, feels like if, uh, you can juxtapose those numbers. Right, but it like makes it, but yeah. it certainly makes it more bearable yeah. after a hurricane sure. to have it. 78 degrees, you can open your windows, you can start doing some work. Um, this, these are some of the most wow. expensive properties in Miami-Dade County. Yeah. This is where um, this is where LeBron James had his home for yeah. a while. Alex these are these, Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, these gorgeous little homes. Look at that, three boats oh, wow. up on the backyard. Wild mm. shots to see Pushed this. all together like toys. Um, you know, and, and the wind gusts, the hurricane wind gusts, were the major issue for Miami-Dade County because they were sustained over hours. I mean, we're talking winds of 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. I think there was a, a wind clock at... Uh, 94 miles an hour at MIA yesterday. So, uh, you know, seeing some of this is not remarkable or incredible, but I guess when you see it in real time and know that, you know, that wind did this kind of damage, it is truly astonishing to see. I think most people are just so glad to have their roofs intact. Glenn yeah. Milberg brought us a man last night on Miami Beach who had a huge gaping hole in his roof, water coming down. I mean, he was just in a panic and a rush all night long, in the dark, no power, trying to deal with water pouring in from his roof. So, I mean, that was a leak, but he lost a substantial part of his roof. And I actually have some sad news to report. It is not 78 degrees. Weather stations are not reporting because things are getting knocked no offline. Wonder. So... Uh, if hot. you're sweating out there, we, <laughs> yeah. we're sorry about that. <laughs> it was actually, and in fact, it was actually 85 when we were driving up okay. here. I thought maybe right. there was just a beautiful cool down and, and Mother well, Nature said, here yeah. you go. Here's a consolation prize. Yeah, these reporting stations would be nice. have not been able to fill us in. They have yeah. lost their ability. And this is that beautiful park there uh, just north of Ransom where so many people go for that, that little bit of a, a playground right there. And it's a big dog park as well in this area. And quite a bit of debris and wow. up and the sand and the, the no, That would be a seaweed. baseball field. That, yes. that, that's not how home plate is supposed right. to look. Well, uh, and this is the day, this is sort of the, the, the day after that people are itching to get out. They're itching to yeah. look at their neighborhoods, at their properties. But of course, as officials say, there's still a little bit of a danger out there because you don't know if you're going to be driving on the road. Uh, the lights are out, the power lines are perhaps down. And um, so you, you've got to be careful if you're, if you're out and about. Yeah, and on the right, this is kind of that yacht club there in Coconut Grove. Um, it's all this area down by Miami City Hall and Monty's, and then you make that big curve, and, and the next thing you know, you're down by Ransom Everglades. So we are seeing the what has happened to these boats. It's such a unique nook back there, and no doubt the winds and the water just... And, and, and Janine, that's uh, Dinner Key on the left uh, there for you. Um, where the pier was damaged. But on the right, you can see too, the, these, these boats have now taken root on the sandbars and they are just piled up one next to the other, tucked onto these sandbars. Boats that were not, most likely, not able to be tied down and they were in a very precarious spot there, right in Coconut Grove. Look at that, that looks like that's a boat that just went right up on that dock. Look at that yeah. catamaran, oh. it's, it's right up on there. Uh, you, can, you can try to tie it and put it, put, tie it on the cleats as best as you can, but it's really no match for storm surge and, and strong winds. We actually spoke to a man yesterday who, and yesterday the conditions were still extremely windy and rainy. This was at about six o'clock in the evening. The sun hadn't gone down yet. He was in a, a full, full rain gear and the weather, the rain was just pelting. 
and he still wanted to go out to check on his boat and check on some of his friends' boats. And uh, he sustained a little damage to his hull and was taking some pictures. And ooh, look yeah, at the right in Coconut Grove. I mean, ooh. these are some very nice boats. And these are this. I think we're now up around by Monty's there. Yes, and right there in the heart of Coconut Grove. You see the big tall buildings there. Some of those newer condos. This is right by City Hall and Monty's. Most of those docks are empty, but the boats that were there did take a real hit. This is all south of Mercy Hospital. And now we're going to make our way up there on the right as we keep an eye on Florida City on the left. And there's another. Is that a boat right up where it shouldn't be? Right up behind someone's home. Looks and another like boat that. sunk oh, in. Yeah, there you underwater, go. it looks like. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's storm surge what insurance over here is too, for, right? Yes. Ay, ay, ay. Yes. Oh, that yeah. is just hard to see for people. But thank God these, and that one's about to go completely under. Thank goodness yeah. they, these roofs are intact, though. The homes right. are intact, and that's yeah. what people really care about. And all of that can be replaced. Yeah, and so far, uh, we have not heard of any loss of life. Yeah. Only in Miami-Dade County, one death so far yeah. with someone who had a generator in their home. One person has died from carbon monoxide poisoning, and that's exactly what Max talks about, too, these, these um, after effects and the deaths yeah. that happen after a storm. So please yeah, be careful deaths. out there. Right? Yeah, indirect deaths that he talked about. And also, you know, keep in mind, too, don't try to go outside and assess the damage. And anywhere where there's a down power line, uh, that's a major issue because just consider any line that's down to be hot and try to avoid it as much as you can. It looks like we're coming up on another some sort of a bay and harbor here where you can see, um, well, that boat there did not survive. There you go. Um, winding up on its side, taking on water. And how random. You know, three other boats yeah. look fine, and that one uh, <laughs> right. is just a, a loss. And, and that's the, the power of Mother Nature. It is so random to see some homes just fine, some homes with power, some not. Some boats will make it, and others will not. Yeah, All it just takes right. is the right sort of angle for a mm -hmm. gust of wind to come that's and right. whip you up in the right right place at the right time. And you felt that in Coral right Gables, sure. not far from our shot there in Coconut Grove. You were in the Gables last night, and at times it was fine. And then other times, I mean, it can just lift you off your feet. Yeah, yep. people tried to do the right thing by tying their boats down and making sure they were secure. But even that uh, was no match for the winds of Hurricane Irma. And, you know, some people are looking at this and thinking, wow, 25 years ago. I mean, this is, uh, this is sort of what they felt and, and uh, sort of what the coverage was like uh, back then to just kind of see it for the first time in real time and go, whoa, wow, this is, uh, this is remarkable. But, you know, some people think that we dodged a bullet and uh, certainly by not having any deaths, um, at least uh, directly related to the hurricane, uh, we, we did from that sense because these are luxuries. I mean, having boats here and having a catamaran, I mean, that's a luxury.